And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Sunday, March the 27th, 2022. I uh, spent some time on Friday afternoon slash evening updating uh, my charts. And I started with the cash markets for both the S&P, so the SPX, and also in the NASDAQ, I did the NDX. And it was a very clarifying uh, exercise for me in that it made very clear balancing the two together because in, in essence, the future needs to equal the cash in terms of direction and count. And there was a couple of places that I was having trouble with the count as I had had it on the future. So to dive right into it, I will be doing a separate uh, update which will cover that the long-term picture. So I've updated now the long-term picture, what we can expect, where things may go, and during over what time period. So uh, beginning with the daily chart for our daily update, here is where I believe we are and where the count and the labeling have changed. So what I have now done is at that 4101.75 low, which was on the 24th of February, that is now the completion point for intermediate wave one. So on a daily basis, the daily chart, I can now count five waves of minor degree and five waves of, um, and five waves of minor degree, excuse me, down, which puts in a, an intermediate fifth wave down. So I can count both our, uh, five down on the hourly chart and now five down on the daily chart. So it, it gives a lot of support to those highs being in and that what we're now doing is just a, an intermediate wave two corrective rally. So having put that together, I now want to go over in a little bit more detail on what is happening now. So indeed, the low is here. And I'll tell you, because we can get a little funky here, because that is the low where I put the low of one against wave four. And we know what that rule is. But now I wanna take this over and put it on a closed basis, which I do often when I'm dealing with what could appear to be a sketchy Elliott labeling. Here on the closing basis, which is how Elliot formulated his counts, that it is wave one does not overlap wave four, and it's much clearer one, two, three, four, and a five. Actually, the five belongs over there. And I will do that. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it right there because that fits on the other chart. Um, but I believe that is going to be it. So just forgive me and let me activate this drawing and put that over there because that was the other point that the cash market was showing me, uh, or actually the line chart was showing me the cleaner points where it did end. I'm using for the Fibonacci basis, that extreme, which is 4101.75. But for account basis, this is the low of the sequence it started there. So one, two, three, four, and a five. And that put in wave five. And then we got, this should be one, two, and now this is a three. So I can move that as well. Nice to be working with your daily chart. And then put the two over here. Now it may still kind of maybe end up, but this is gonna make it clearer that we're in this third, or the third is there, that was the four, and this is the fifth. And that would be telling us, oops, that the fifth wave may be in. And therefore wave A of intermediate wave two is complete. So let me demonstrate again on the daily chart. One, two, three, four, five, intermediate wave one. So now I'm in an intermediate wave two, which will consist of three 
waves of minor degree labeled A, B, and C. So this is wave A, and it is pretty clear that we are doing and have maybe completed five waves up, but that is only minor wave A. So I'm looking for the completion of minor wave A. We have resistance at 45, 38, 52. It got up, I believe, to 36 on Friday, but actually 39, according to where the extreme went. If I look at that high. So this may be complete. And if that's the case, then we're going to drop in a B wave. And again, I'm leaving this open because as you can see, the market's not really flying lower to start a B wave right now. It's off, it's off 750, but no great shakes, nothing really to kind of get upset or worry about. When we have support at 45.11 or 45.14, what is that going to be? Come on, tell me. 11, 45.11. And then we have additional down here at 45, 44, 59.60. And then we have a cluster of our moving averages. Again, daily chart. Bringing it down to the hourly chart now, we can see in the interior where somehow this has still got a bunch of ugly stuff on it. This is labeled one, two, and not A, B, and this being C. So let me get rid of that. And this is the one, and then we got a one, and this two again ends up over here. And that's where actually the wave one is. And that's the hourly chart. Let's go to here. Candles. Yeah, one and then two. And they don't, they don't really, we might have had a little bit extra there, but I'm leaving it as a one, two. And I'm going to activate this one, put this one back up here. Still thinking, you know, three. You can tell, you know, it gets all kind of skewed. Let's get it lined up so it makes sense. Three, four, and this could be the fifth. So that's the hourly chart. So coming off, we'd be looking for a B wave and we'd need to run the fibs from there to here. Now that's saying that our highs are in. And quite honestly, it's a little bit sketchy and I don't know. We'll go to that 40 level, we'll put it right there. Um, so, but we do have, if that is the high, we're looking for B wave. B waves can go uh, 382 to 50%. This one's on the way up. So now we gotta look at these interiors for what we can do on the way back down. B wave can go all the way down. So we got 4386, 4340, and then we have on the downside 4292. And a B wave can go all the way down there and then shoot up in the C wave. So we should get a little bit of two-way play here over the next day or so. Um, once we can confirm that this is the fifth and the completion of the A wave. Uh, otherwise, we continue to have resistance at 453940-ish and then 4600. So while we'll likely have some in between, um, we can't discount the fact that it could go all the way up to 4,600 before the B wave begins. Okay, so how I wanna leave this. The update chart <clears throat> starts on the daily. I may have to make some additional adjustments because they're not lining up where I want them to. This continues to want to line up here even though that came out there. So I'm going to be leaving, oh, dang it. I will make my adjustments and I'll put them back together where the, the five and the one will represent 4101 because that's where I'm running the uh, Fibonacci retracements for the wave two off of that low. So again, I will use a closing basis for labeling. And again, that is likely gonna push us over to there. So if I go to the daily and come back over here and go over to the line chart, it does put it over here where I have it. But for the purposes of the retracements, I do include the extremes. So here we have that. And then again, this does fit one, two, and I'm gonna leave it. And then we have the third and the four and then possibly the five. So right now, leaving it the way it is, uh, we're gonna allow for additional upside to start the day. And then, 
we'll get a B wave followed by an additional C wave. So I continue to believe that the next uh, week or so, uh, premium will continue to remain in the calls, which, which will suggest uh, stronger rallies rather than declines. Okay, next update will be on Monday, the 28th. 